All right, hello and uh, welcome to this 3D World tutorial. Uh, we are going to be looking at View and ZBrush and how to combine the two uh, to produce an image as you can see here on the screen. So what we have here, uh, as you would have already seen in the magazine, is we've got uh, several elements. We've got our main uh, rock feature in the middle here. This is created in view. We've got a terrain across on the right created in view. All materials and ecosystems also are from view. And then in the foreground here, we have our uh, added ZBrush, uh, a ZBrush rock. So this uh, tutorial is going to be broken up into uh, three stages, uh, three breaks rather, six stages. Uh, this one's going to be creating this uh, this first part, creating this rock feature. Uh, second will be uh, about applying materials, the atmosphere setup, scaling, uh, ecosystems, all done in view, and the terrain. And third, the third section will be creating this uh, Z brush uh, rock and and combining it to the view terrain. So. If you want to, uh, you can just skip skip right ahead and go straight to the uh, the last part, and you can uh, learn all about uh, just the specifics of combining uh, ZBrush and and, uh, and View. <clears throat> all right, so let's get cracking on the central uh, my, uh, central rock feature. Here I've uh, got a standard scene loaded up from uh, from View 9.5 that I'm using, and I'm going to uh, just drop down a couple of primitives and uh, what this is going to do is this will create our uh, basic meta blob uh, f uh, shape that we're going to use to uh, to displace in a moment so I'm just creating a couple of torus uh, objects and just going to position them uh, similar to the image that I showed you and uh, you can also add a couple of spheres as well just feel free to sort of flatten them hold uh, hold down alt and move to uh, to duplicate or you can press control D but uh, alt and move is just slightly quicker and we're just going to place these uh, randomly around changing uh, changing the shapes and orientation and the scale with the with the torus uh, I like to uh, change the thickness of them. You can change the scale as well, and that sort of does essentially the same thing. Um, or you can widen it like that. Um, so uh, I think that's probably is getting close. I'm just going to duplicate this last one, move it up as well, maybe squash it, not like that. Uh, go like this and squash it that way. And if I now look at our uh, render, uh, if I just quickly change this to screen render, and I'll show you what that now looks like. So now we've got our uh, our basic uh, shapes that we that we want here, and we're going to metablob them so that we can start displacing them. So what we do is on the right here, select all your uh, all the primitives that you want to include. Come across to the right and you'll see this little blob uh, here that's joined, two spheres joined. So uh, I just, sorry, um, I just did a hyper uh, hyper blob, not a meta blob. So just click on it once and you'll see it now gets uh, blobbed together. So that's, that's a good starting point. If you want to uh, customize it, like for instance I don't like how small this is I'd like it to sort of uh, more come out of the top of of my uh, blob of rocks and I'd like these rocks to sort of come across this way as well so you can go on and expand this uh, meta blog uh, meta blob group and you can start to uh, move them across and you'll actually see a, a, a real-time representation of that in uh, in your viewport so I'll get, grab this uh, second torus, and I'll stretch it up, and I might just move it in, rotate it out a bit more to see. Also, doing local uh, transformations is, is good. You can get things to sort of stick out a little better, rather than just always using global. Um, okay, so 
if I rotate around this, I'm pretty... I'm getting happy with that. Still don't like how these ones are sticking out. But I'm not going to play around with it too much. I mean, this is just for demonstration of how you can get the similar thing. You'll probably have your own <clears throat> your own ideas on, on what you want to create anyway. So here it is uh, without displacement. And what you can also do is, uh, in the Metablob uh, group, you can double click on the header and you've got two options here. You've got the intensity of the mixed uh, con contributions of mixed objects. So you can start getting uh, sort of broken up uh, or very, very fine uh, lines. And then you've also got the envelope distance. So that's how far does the actual um, uh, envelope sort of uh, go. It's sort of like a uh, a bloat or a magnifier or a, or a, a uh, scaling uh, effect. So we're going to leave those at the default because I'm pretty happy with that. Right, so now that we have our uh, main object, we can uh, start displacing it. So we'll just uh, load up a material just for uh, reference sake. So we'll make it a mixed uh, material so we can sort of see We'll use the rock and grass, which is a mixed material. So we can see on the tops of uh, of areas we've got uh, a green uh, grass appearing. But we don't have any displacement yet, and we're going to add that now. So right-click on the Material Preview, Edit Material, go to the Bumps tab, and we're going to load in one of the view uh, presets. And for most cases, uh, the fractal presets here will do... 90% uh, of the job. Uh, they, they're they great. They, they pretty much cover all aspects uh, and you can use them for everything. So uh, the three that are really good for rocks are actually these three through here. Sediments and grains, complex sedimentary rock and the simple sedimentary rock. So let's go with uh, complex sedimentary and tick displacement and we'll probably have to refine this a l somewhat uh, because as you can see, we're not really seeing anything in this uh, preview. You can see a little bit of the shape being dis, uh, distorted, but not really by much. So if we go by 8, uh, increase the depth, and uh, render again, uh, we're still not really uh, seeing much. So let's just decrease the uh, scale to 0.1. Um, on all axes and you'll see a massive difference now. So now it's blowing out of proportion because we've reduced the scale and uh, and we've still got this huge depth so we could probably reduce that to 2 uh, for instance and there we go so now we're really getting a, a nicer shape. Some Still some jagged edges probably because it's now getting too too small but uh, if we change this to 0.2 the uh, the whole idea of uh, of displacement is just for with view is to just explore the uh, the different um, options and uh, and features that you can use like uh, smoothing smoothing out those ridges. So what this will do is uh, smooth out any sharper edges. Same with the smoothing here. That's actually an algorithm that will smooth it. So if we press OK, let's render again, and there we go. We're getting a nicer, nicer shape and uh, some good uh, definition there. But we're still not getting really deep grooves. And if I, if I just go in a little bit closer, and I'll do a final, uh, final render there, and we'll come back in. Uh, and I'll do a little larger, so we can see the effect. All right, and uh, we are back. And uh, this has now rendered at final at 1600 by 900. And it took four minutes and 19 seconds. Uh, now that's and that's global radiosity lighting. So that's a hell of a long time, uh, and we don't want to have to spend that much time just rendering such a simple object. But you can see the uh, the general shapes that we've uh, created. These nice steps uh, through here. The nice break up in the silhouette of our object. And some of these nice uh, ridges, these two here that I really like as well, which you could uh, extract the information uh, and and really apply it to a uh, a mixed material if you 
Uh, if you had it, you'll see that in a moment. In fact, I'll show you before we finish this. Um, and we, we've also got this uh, lean back as well. Uh, if if this was sticking out of a coastline, uh, the the rock is nicely leaning back towards the uh, the 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 cliffside. And uh, so, what we're going to do now is a simple uh, thing. We can uh, bake this displacement. Now that I'm happy with it, uh, I'll right click on the meta blob. I'll come down to bake to polygons and what this is going to give us is an option of uh, what resolution we want it and it's an approximation but generally I just max it out and let the software do as uh, good a job as it will allow us to do because at the end of the day if uh, down the line you want to use it and you haven't baked it uh, with a high enough resolution uh, you're going to have to go and either recreate it or rebake it so you might as well just bake it at uh, full resolution and you can then uh, down sample it after that and uh, and use it for a background element or whatever you happen to to need it for so I'll show you the way you would uh, down sample it, just double click on it and come in and decimate the object but we don't want to do that so now when I render, you've, uh, you can see this image here, got all these nice ridges and, uh, and the, the shadows casting and it looks really, really fantastic. And now when I render, uh, you'll notice it took, uh, took four, 4 minutes and 19 seconds before and this will probably take about 50, 50 seconds, maybe even less. I mean you can see it's screaming through now. Now uh, you can also see that all our detail has indeed disappeared. And that is that is a two-pronged sort of attack on our mesh. Uh, for one, as you can see, you got this uh, triangulation. Now that's that's because of this torus. Uh, I stretched the torus a little bit too too far, and it hasn't been able to add that detail in there. See how this one this one seems fine, uh, except for up here. Uh, but we do have this nice grass uh, layover over the side here and it took 19 seconds to render so a huge difference in <coughs> the speed, the rendering speed. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So here it is again, you can see that grass uh, nicely appearing on these flatter surfaces and bringing out that, uh, that mesh detail. Uh, now for some reason this, uh, this meta blob didn't uh, didn't seem to populate as as high. It's only 1.38 million. Uh, you can get up to I think 4 million, uh, but that will be due to due to the displacement um, options that I had. If I load this again and come into the function, uh, you have these details here. If I zoom in and show you them all, this is what's creating our our displaced material and they're all being blended into uh, a final um, effect here that you can see if I just uh, increase the size. So while that renders you've got uh, th uh, four different fractals and they're all going to be blending and whatever the smallest feature is will be restricting uh, that if you've got a lot of noise it won't transfer that over. But to get past that what we can do is then we reload that back in as a simple bump map and say put it back up to 4.5 and we can then render that and it will be adding the same detail back onto our displaced terrain so it's going to start bringing out um, our the same detail that we've already got there. We're still going to have these triangulation problems, um, but they would, uh, if you experience those when you bake, just just uh, undo it and uh, and tweak with your tweak your fractals. Uh, but for this uh, for this instance, uh, that'll be fine. Otherwise, we'll be running here. We're sitting here for ages trying to trying to fix that. All right, so we're happy with that, and uh, now. If uh, now that we have got our base uh, base or feature rock, uh, for instance, if we're we're back here looking at it and it's it's huge and in, in our face and not looking very good, but we are going to uh, first create our scene to place this into, and we'll create everything, all the elements, and then we'll fit this inside our scene. So 
firstly we'll go and save our object so we can right click on it or right click over here and save the object and we can save it to the desktop as uh, uh, metablob01 um, and now that that's saved it'll uh, a little render preview there save it out as a uh, .vob which is a view object and once that's done we'll delete it and we'll start uh, looking at our uh, major terrain. Now you don't have to delete it but I like to just start from uh, a fresh scene so that you sort of understand that you can create these assets and a huge number of assets uh, uh, displaced meta blobs and hyper blobs and whatever you want to make and you can use them in future uh, future scenes so while that's exporting I'll just open up another copy and we're gonna get started on our uh, major our main scene so <clears throat> uh, I will leave it there uh, for now and we'll come back and uh, because the next section is actually uh, quite a large one we'll be composing the scene applying materials importing this and then the final part will be in uh, ZBrush so see you soon